Hi everyone, the Tiger from Atomic Car Review and today our review about 2019 Infiniti QX60. The starting price on Infiniti QX60 is $44,000. For the same price you can get base version of uh, Acura MDX and uh, almost the same price for Buick Enclave which is $40,000. But if you want to get all-wheel drive, which is horrible on Infiniti, you're supposed to spend a little bit more, $1,500. In general it's very nice vehicle. If it's gonna be bad vehicle, it's not gonna be like most selling luxury SUV in the US market. We would like to be more picky and show you the difference between other SUVs in this class compared to Infiniti KX60. And also we will show you this car underneath and show you what is good, what is bad about Infiniti. Infiniti KX60 is a, one of the biggest uh, mid-size SUV in the market. It's a little bit uh, shorter compared to Dodge Durango, one inch shorter or three inch shorter than Buick and Clay, but the bigger one compared to Acura MDX, more than two inches. Infiniti KX60 equipped with 3.5 liter engine and the CVT transmission, which was from 2013 without any change. That's about uh, CVT transmission, but engine start to be a little bit more power. The best time from 0 to 60 is 7.1 seconds, which was uh, recorded by Car and Driver magazine. This happened only after the increased horsepower to 295 horsepower. If you are a mother of five kids, you're not gonna uh, care about this 0 to 60 miles or other stuff, for example, like horsepower. You care more about the uh, interior space. And that's the reason why you're gonna buy Infiniti QX60 compared to Acura MDX or to Toyota Highlander. A lot of us know on the US market that Infiniti is kind of Japanese BMW, but this car is completely different. This car is trying to be more like Japanese Buick, I would say. On current generation, Infiniti QX60 can be like even on the same level, maybe even better by uh, right comfort compared to Buick and Clave. And that's the reason why you're gonna choose Infiniti QX60, because your kids would be happy with more softer suspension when you ride somewhere far away on the highway, and because of the more space for legroom and more space for cargo place. This car looks very aggressive on the front, but on the back, for me, it looks like somebody put this car on the tires from bicycles. They're very narrow and uh, really small. We have a couple customers with the same car, but most of them, uh, most of this car equipped with 20 inch rims. And one time this customer brought for us uh, his tires. And when I saw the tires, I asked him, is this really right size? He said, yes. And why I asked him this question? Because it's really surprised me because this size of SUV has just 235 millimeter tires. Uh, original size on this car on 18 inches, 235, 65, 18. On uh, 20 inches, 235, 55, 18. It's really narrow tires, which is fine for fuel efficiency, but not really good tires for tread. But maybe nice if you uh, have this vehicle somewhere in uh, a rainy area. But again, it's, uh, these tires look very, very narrow, especially when you look on the back and make this car look, I would say, cheaper than its real. I would call Infiniti QX60 do-it-yourself SUV. Why? Because some of the features are really great on this car, but some of them underdeveloped. One of the weird features why they didn't put sensor for door handle. On well, most of the modern car, especially right now, it's very important during coronavirus when you try to touch all, as less as possible surface, they didn't put sensor behind the handle. And to open this car, you're supposed to press button. It's fine if you want to close it, because of most car where they equip with the sensor, you scratch it the paint. Or here with the button, it's much easier. But Sensors, I would say, must have for luxury SUV. My opinion is it's not a good idea to have both buttons next to each other uh, and underneath of the molding uh, to open and close the car or trunk. For example, on Dodge Durango, to close the car, you have buttons over here on this uh, chrome molding. To open the trunk, you have like regular button on the middle of the trunk. Over here, you're always supposed to find which one of them for open, which one of them for close. And only one idea how you can find out which one is the button. One of them is rounded, it's for closing. One of them is for open, it's a uh, square one. Also, if you didn't spend a lot of money on your Infiniti QX60, you can get just standard button to close your trunk. But if your mom with the two keys on the hand and, uh, for example, bags in, from store in your hands uh, and you didn't pay for your, I don't know, like, moving sensor for your leg, only one way how you can close your trunk with a full hand is like this. The interior of a QX60 not so dark, for example, as Buick and Clave, but I would wish to have some lights over here. For example, if you open your trunk in some dark place, you can see what is underneath or what you try to put in the trunk. For example, Dodge Durango have it. In feet, you have just one light over here on the roof, which uh, put some lights in your trunk. Another good thing about Infiniti, especially for Uber drivers, if you're gonna use this car with a fully loaded interior, but still wanna have car seat inside your trunk, Infiniti allow you to do this compared to 
like Toyota Highlander or Acura NDX, you still have space in your trunk and you would be able to close it. During this quarantine, I try to be a healthy person and watch a lot of this exercise online on YouTube and follow all these rules and try to do some exercise with my kids a couple of days ago. But right now I have some problem. I hurt my back and <laughs> right now I'm walking like grandpa. What I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. I was very happy to jump in Infinity because this is, I think, is one of the best seats which I ever use because especially because of this uh, back support i think it's the most comfortable back support which i ever saw in uh, any seats and i don't know if it's true or no nissan always telling any advertisements that they use seats for infinity for nissan which they built together with nasa what does it mean that means that the seat spread your weight evenly on whole seat and you can rest during a very 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 long trip with my short back right now i think i can prove this this nasa seat is very very nice only one thing i think which they should have to be a real luxury car it's, they're supposed to do adjustment of your back support, not only in front and back way, also in up and down. And could, I mean, it would be nice if they have electric headrest. One of my favorite features inside the interior is the door handle. They look very, very expensive from uh, like real aluminum. And also they very nice to touch and the big one, you're not going to miss them on the door. Very nice that Infinity has memory seats, but I don't know why for luxury SUV, it's, I would say, normal right now to have at least three memory settings. On Infinity, you have only two. Any car reviewer complains that Infinity is outdated car. Yes, first of all, why? Because this car has analog dashboard. This car has regular gearbox shifter and regular buttons on the steering wheel and not so many touch touchscreen button. But for me, guys, it's really, really great. If I don't have to pay for all this nice and uh, modern features, I would say I would want to have my old gearbox, which is very easy and easy to understand. You don't have to even watch on them. For example, as on Acura MDX, it's very intuitive and you can do whatever you want. Your analog dashboard is always fine. For example, heating control seats, easy and nice to understand what's going on with them. With the same with the volume, no all the stupid touchscreen buttons. You really understand what you're doing. But one thing which I don't like it about this particular Infinity K6 is they don't have even normal shelf where you can put your phone. You have space only over here in the cup holder, but we all American, we're gonna drink coffee. It's not gonna happen that phone would be over here. Phone would be over here, but in this case, they're gonna touch always your charger or something else. Very nice is that Infinity name it all place which can confuse you. For example, your arm rest. They already write it, which one is open, upper cover which is the lower upper lower the same for sun visor you lower it and they write it they sliding the same for the rear seats kx60 has one of the biggest uh, sun visor which i ever saw uh, maybe could be compared only with chrysler 300 and very nice that it's movable plus they have these nice features for credit cards or your discount cards but compared to bigger sun visor they have one of the smallest, maybe even smallest uh, sunroof which I ever saw on a car. Not a big deal, but again, you pay at least $50,000 for this car. And in most of this car, you already have LED interior light. On Infinity, it has just regular bulbs. QX60 equipped with front and back collision uh, prevention system. Especially, I'm very happy with the back one, because sometimes you really rest and don't pay attention about what's going on in the back, and then Infinity could save your money or your life. As a mechanic, I'm very happy with Infinity interface. For example, if I need to do a reset for maintenance or oil life, it's very easy to do. You don't have to press some gas pedal, press some button for three seconds. Everything is the same as you use your windows. You just choose, you press it enter and then press it enter if you want to reset or do something else. Very nice and uh, convenient features. Everything is easy to understand on the dashboard of Infiniti QX60, but climate control, I think, is a little bit oversought. For example, uh, when you just jump in this car, it's hard to understand where is the uh, temperature, because usually it's just separate lines, one of them for climate control, another one for navigation and audio system. But uh, for some reason, Infiniti put next to the navigation and audio control system temperature control and the button which turn on and off your climate control. For example, another thing, if you want to change temperature on the back that's what i find out you press rear climate control and then you do not understand which is uh, temperature you choosing i mean changing right now it's the back on the front yes you have the sign over here rear but how can i get understand how to turn back to the 
uh, front one. Yes, of course, you can read the manual, but nobody does this, right? And right now we are changing front passenger. It's really, really complicated. For example, on Dodge Durango or on any other car, we see a separate temperature for front seat and separate from the back. If you press a button synchronize all rows, like front, back and the front passenger, you see when you change the temperature, it's going like on all gauges in the same time. Also, a lot of cars to turn on your climate control can use any buttons related to climate control. It's a deflector position, it's temperature gauge, it's on and off, like everything. On Infinity, you can turn it on only by pressing fan buttons or by pressing on and off button for climate control. Each seat row on Infinity KX60 equipped with two USB ports. But what is surprised me, because I didn't find any USB port which can work uh, when you turn off your car. For example, sometimes during our vacation, I'm worried to leave something inside the car. But if your phone is dead and you want to charge it, I can close my phone over here in armrest and leave it on charge. On Infinity KX60, no USB ports, which can work when you turn off your vehicle. Infinity has one of the most comfortable seats in mid-size crossover. First of all, they're very comfortable. Another reason because they, you can move them. You can move them front and back. And for example, right now I'm completely in front position and my height is 6'1 and I would say I still feel myself normal. Yes, I cannot stick anything over here, no even finger, but it's comfortable. For example, in my Dodge Durango it could be only like this. Also, you can recline them and also reclining position, also one of the most comfortable which I ever saw. Back of the front seats equipped with two pockets. Nice, most of the car has one. Another very important thing about Infiniti QX6 is that if you still have kids on the back seat in a car seat and you need to use third row seats, Infiniti QX6, I think it's only one SUV on the market which equip middle seats, which you can move together with the car seat. You don't have to remove your car seat to move second row on front to let somebody get on a third row. You just press this up and move together with the car seat. But in general, back seat on luxury SUV too complicated. On Acura MDX or even Honda Pilot, you just press button and they move. Even on my old 2005 Ford Freestyle, you have like electric button, you press it and all seats for second row move up and front. For Infinity, book house is complicated. Then you go back, then you go this. Did you count it how many moves I did it to put the seats back? Probably at least three or four. The one of the greatest thing on Infinity that that you can put passenger on third row without moving your uh, child seats. Check it out. You still have entrance to third row. If your height is 6.1 as mine, you're not going to be able to sit with the second row seat all the way back. It's it's not the way. But if you're going to put them as Regular position, it's more than enough space, not so comfortable as in Dodge Durango, but much better compared to Acura MDX or even not even Highlander, not even closer to Pathfinder or Infiniti QX60. You see, I still have at least two inches between front seats and third row seats. The floor mats quality is very nice. It's very nice and plushy to touch. But guys, if you really like to visit some beaches, it very hard to vacuum them because they're very very soft and car uh, the sand stuck inside this uh, carpets very very well and then as much as you're gonna do vacuum you're gonna get uh, some sand out but because they didn't put any rubber surface under the carpet they all water which you get from your uh, shoes inside the car going through all these carpets directly to the metal floor and if you check how look infinity or any nissan around 2005 the metal floor under the carpet is completely rotted out and only one surface which separates you from road is your carpet for active family vacation maybe it would be better choice at dodge durango first of all it's cheaper almost twice another reason it has bigger trunk where you can put all a lot of your stuff uh, and third reason is because you have uh, railings which are already mounted in dodge durango and you always have them with you you just need to flip it one and put it in any position which you want and put kayak on the top, ski, whatever you want. On the Infinity, you're supposed to buy it this separate. And also, if you're going somewhere on the mountain, I think Infinity one of the most horrible cars with the all-wheel drive system. If you're gonna watch any all-wheel drive review, Infinity, Nissan, uh, Toyota has one of the worst all-wheel drive system on the market.
No matter what kind of brand would you choose, uh, German one, some European or Japanese or American brand, Infiniti, I believe, would be one of the most comfortable SUV on the market, maybe most one. KX60 is definitely a nice uh, family SUV because of uh, comfort ride, but at the same time, Infiniti still have this uh, sporty style steering wheel. It's not the same, maybe understandable as the uh, MDX because uh, when you make it turn a little bit on the left on, on the right uh, with the steering wheel you feel it's a little bit like wavy feeling I would say you feel like, like you drive car on a uh, soft winter tires the third row headrest is pretty big and remind me bunny ears and very bad that Infinity didn't put the system which they allow you to put a uh, headrest down just pressing the button we're driving right now this car 65 miles per hour and the noise level is 67 decibel which is i would say a little bit less compared to honda pilot or uh, even dodge durango for a couple points uh, dodge durango usually 69 infinity 67. infinity put laminated uh, side windows on this car just on the front doors uh, it's a uh, not so significant compared to previous version with the regular windows just two decibels or three decibels difference infinity tells that it's just one decibels but it's definitely noticeable because it's just next to your ear and you think that this car is much quieter compared to other one competitors or to old version without these specific windows the biggest difference of uh, Infiniti QX60 compared to any other competitors is because this car equipped with CVT transmission. What does it mean? That no any other car would be more comfortable to ride than uh, Infiniti. But at the same time, it's not going to be the same sporty as any MDX, uh, X5 or anything with a multi-speed automatic transmission. But at the same time, yes, this car is not so sporty, but a lot of people who live in a mountain area uh, tells that this car is perfect for mountain driving because during the shifting down shifting on automatic transmission you lost a lot of power and it's very significant you feeling if you tow some like big trailer or anything like this nobody complain about the same issue with infinity or nissan pathfinder guys i understand that infinity is a luxury brand but uh, no matter what you have under the hood or on your emblem when you look on Infiniti or Nissan engine, it looks the same as Toyota from early 90s. It's exactly the same look like my Toyota Solara 1999. When you compare Infiniti engine compartment compared to Honda or Toyota, it looks too busy. Too many hoses, too many wires, too many solenoids. If you check how many this solenoid, which is related to EVAP system under Toyota hood or under GM even or anything else, it's usually one or two. Infinity has one, two, three, four already. What does it mean? That means that in the future, if you're gonna own this Infinity, they would this Infinity would have more problem with the web system compared to Toyota or Honda. Or if you're already owner, for example, some 2005 Nissan Murano, I would say expect problem with the web system. I never was a fan to work with Infiniti or Nissan engine because engine compartment looks too busy and for example even this one which is too small I would say looks even more complicated to reach something under the hood because you see how tiny is over here plus a lot of these plastic covers. Guys, it's not exactly my opinion but I just would like to tell you some truths which I uh, heard from one of the guys who export a lot of Infiniti and uh, other Japanese brand from uh, Japan to Russia. He said that according to his experience, a lot of Japanese people said that Nissan is crap, but engine on Nissan is the best engine compared to any Japanese car brand. From my experience, it really could be true, because I replaced a lot of engines on any other brands, uh, but didn't replace a lot of, for example, on Honda or Toyota, but at least I replaced something on Nissan for my more than 10 years experience, I didn't replace even one engine. Usually most common issues with Nissan engine is related only for owners who didn't change often oils under the hood and especially if he used semi-synthetic or um, regular oil. If you didn't change oil often on your Nissan engine or Infiniti engine and use cheap oil, usually you can uh, have problem with the 
uh, valve timing uh, solenoid which regulate your timing on your engine usually they get clogged i would say this exactly the same as on honda but on infinity and nissan it's more often sometimes you can do just cleanup of this solenoid sometimes you have to replace the price for this solenoid is 170 dollars usually on nissan and uh, it depends where is the solenoid located it's usually one and a half two hours to replace Right now let's compare a little bit V6 engine from Nissan, Toyota and Honda. Nissan is more closer to Toyota with the same issues, but I would say more reliable. The same issue what I mean. If you need to replace your spark plugs, which has happened once per 100,000 miles, or for example, if you need to early to replace your, some of your ignition coil, it's the same complicated as on Toyota. Because if you get some problem with bank number one, which is located under the intake manifold, you're supposed to replace it. And for example, if you need to replace some ignition coil under this intake manifold or replace whole spark plugs, it's going to take you the same three and a half four hours on Nissan as on Toyota, which is mean you're going to spend more money compared to Honda because on the Honda, you're going to spend around one hour to replace any ignition coil or whole spark plugs. But good thing about Infinity engine is that this engine has a timing chain. Compared to uh, Acura or Honda, uh, Honda still use a timing belt. But timing belt on Honda is very reliable and uh, take around three and a half, three hours to replace it. On Nissan, you don't have to do this. On Toyota, you also don't have to do this. Uh, Toyota also equipped with timing chain. But if you ever watch our previous review about Toyota Highlander or other Toyota with V6 engine as Toyota Sienna, I told you that Toyota usually have a lot of issue with the water pump. And the time to replace this water pump, which could happen even around 60,000 miles, time to replace it would take you around like four hours or four and a half, five and a half hours, depends on the car. And this is going to cost you more than three hours for replacement timing belt on Acura. Nissan doesn't have this problem. One of the most hardest things on Infinity engine is check your oil level. It's easy to check, but it's hard to put your dipstick back, especially on old Infinities and Nissan engines, I believe until end of 2000. Or another at least still to put some guidance to do this before it was really, really complicated. A lot of people think that Toyota is most reliable brand in the world or at least on the uh, United States market. But what we find out right now, especially with the Lexus, Lexus cover everything under the hood with the plastic. And to check it, your coolant level, at least how look your radiator cup, you need to replace all this plastic. And to replace it, you cannot do this like an in infinity, just easy, remove the cup. You're supposed to take all these clips out and check your coolant level only with replacement holes this plastic panel, which is take time. You're not going to do this by yourself. And usually nobody do it and the, only your mechanic can check it. What, just, what does it mean? That you didn't add your coolant often, you overheat your engine, you get a lot of oil leaks, your engine starts to burn oil. This means that all this fancy stuff uh, which Lexus make under his hood to make this car look more fancy, more modern, just completely crap. Infinity is more better in this case compared to Lexus or Toyota. Even compared to Honda, which still have some access to all this like service point infinity has a better point to check uh, your coolant level at least you can do this without a flashlight on honda it's sometimes it's very hard and you need to use flashlight which is means that infinity easier to daily maintain compared to honda or toyota or lexus under the car infinity looks like most cheapest luxury car i would say even most cheapest car on the market cheaper looks only cadillac or any gm brand Underneath of Infinity or Nissan, you're not going to find any plastic uh, protection from rust or any dust or anything what you can find on the road. No engine cover underneath of the engine. Nothing over here to cover or increase your aerodynamic or to cover exhaust or fuel tank. Everything is the same as on I don't know, Nike's cars. I think Infinity should put some protection under the engine because he's oil pans on engine and on transmission is so bad quality that usually around five years after production of this car they came to our garage with almost all oil on the floor oil pans is so rusty and leaking everywhere i believe it's the same bad oil pans only on mazda this car is 2019 just half a year of ownership and 12,000 miles on it it's nothing it's almost brand new car but check it out it already has oil leak 
If you ever watch our review about Honda, I told you a lot about the same problem on new Honda's engine. And I believe Infiniti used the same supplier with the main oil seals on his engine, the same as Honda. Exhaust in general on Infiniti is pretty nice, especially your resonator, your muffler, all these banks is nice, but quality of your welding spot on your flange it's so horrible and mostly all of our customer who own infinity or nissan should replace his exhaust system three years after he, uh, they purchase this car because usually they you lost all your connection between flanges very very fast and i will provide picture of what's going on usually with the infinity or nissan exhaust system if you check how infinity suspension look on the front and on the back and front front suspension look like more modern Rear suspension looks like cheap one. Infinity doesn't use a lot of aluminum parts on its suspension. For example, front one has just lower control arms from aluminum. Back one has only upper one, which is more lighter one from aluminum. Lower one is still from regular steel, and uh, which is means that it's cheap. Infinity QX60 is mostly front wheel drive car. And especially if you're gonna check how look rear axle on this car, check it out. Look at this, it's the same white, for example, I believe like on my bicycle. It's so, so small, I never saw so small axles. Which just means that do not expect that this car could be like very nice off-roader. If you check uh, suspension on Infiniti QX60 and on uh, a Buick Enclave, for example, we did a review a couple months ago on it, you will find out that suspension is very similar, I mean design of suspension, but difference only in rear stabilizer. Rear stabilizer on Infiniti is much wider, which just means that Infinity still have the same comfort ride as an Buick, for example, probably thanks to very tiny uh, sh rear shocks. Yeah. But it's much better during the uh, heavy turn because rear stabilizer is much wider and hold your car is much better compared to Buick and Clay. Infinity did the weird thing. For example, compared to Acura, where they don't even know that they can put soft uh, material for mud shield under your fenders, but on Infinity they use for some reason cheap plastic one on the front, probably because they use at least some noise re reduction material, I mean uh, his double side uh, windows on the front doors, but for front fenders they use cheap plastic one, which has reduced noise much worse compared to newer material. But back one mud shield under your uh, quarter panel is nice and soft, which is means that re this material reduces noise much better compared to Hondas or Acuras. But just to your information, my Dodge Durango 2011 has the same soft materials on front and back. Infinity luxury SUV for some reason only on the back. Also nice thing about Infinity Q60 because it's still old school car without all this fancy electric motors for your rear emergency brake. On Infinity they still use regular cable with regular brake pads, which is mean cheaper repair. The diameter of front and rear brakes it's pretty small, as you can see it's a 18 inch rims, but looks like this car may be possible to allow you to use 17 inch rims, but I cannot complain anything about the brake quality. Brake quality is pretty nice and pretty solid and uh, I like it. A lot of Infinity owners complain about bad quality of uh, lighting. I would say I don't have any issue with this. This is a low beam, low beam um, fog lights. High beam, low beam and fog lights, just low beam. <laughs>